Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg and I am here today to do a Friday Reads video in unusual circumstances, as you can probably see. I am at WSU. This is the vet hospital behind me, so there were probably a lot of hustle and bustle going on in the background because people are getting out of their cars, they're kind of walking their dogs and uh, getting their cats and everything into the building. So you might see uh, some people walking around, but that's what that is. Jamie is inside uh, with Joel. He is sitting and waiting in the lobby, and she is having her uh, radiation treatment done. Things have been going well. Unfortunately, uh, the equipment was uh, having a bit of trouble this week. So Jamie did have uh, a treatment on Monday, and then she didn't get another one until yesterday, which was Thursday as I'm filming this. And now she is about to have her third. So we're a little bit behind schedule. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because that means I am going to be here at the campus uh, where the hospital is longer than expected. Uh, hopefully only, uh, well, uh, only four days, um, but you know, it's a, it will be good to get her treated. Um, but we are gonna have to stay an extra weekend and uh, stay probably Monday and Tuesday of, of an extra week. And then we need to decide if we're going to drive back on Tuesday or if we will drive back on Wednesday. And uh, that will obviously impact timing for when I will be home and back to resuming uh, regular uh, schedule. Uh, I do have two other videos that I can, I can post next week that I haven't edited yet, but I did film before we left. So that will be coming regardless. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy those. I think, is it two? I honestly don't remember. Everything is a blur. I'm also just looking at myself and realizing that uh, I don't know if I've ever worn my glasses in a video before because I, yes, I wear glasses. I just hate wearing glasses. So usually what happens is I'm filming at home. In the morning, I will take my glasses out into the house with me and take them off because I don't like wearing them, put them down somewhere and completely forget about them. And then in the evening, we will uh, be getting ready to watch television and I can't find my glasses. So... <laughs> Uh, so that's something new, and actually I'm going to take them off and leave them off anyway, because as I said, I just, I don't know what it is. I don't like wearing glasses, but I need them, so it's interesting. That's me, in a nutshell. I should also mention that I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this again next week, um, so I don't know if there will be a Friday Reads next week. If I can do this, it seemed to work fairly well, uh, so that's what I'll do, if I can, but uh, I, I don't want to make any promises. I'll try. Uh, so, th I mean, things are going well as they can be. Uh, unfortunately, we did have that little break. Uh, again, thank you everyone for the support. I thought I would just try to film a little Friday Reads video here because I do have two things to report that I finished this week, which is pretty big for me. Um, I had mentioned that I had started the audio of If I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffrey. And I did manage to finish it this week, uh, which was a huge achievement for me. Um... I was liking it. I just was making very slow progress in pretty much everything. I think just, you know, the generalized stress of um, everything going on and the, the fact that we were planning to come here for Jamie. Uh, speaking true, if you're, if you're new here, hi. Uh, my dog Jamie has a nasal tumor. So we are here uh, getting her radiation treatment for it. Um, it is typically a very treatable tumor with radiation and uh hopefully that is the way it will be for her but uh yeah so because of the stress i really was having a hard time reading and a hard time listening to an audiobook which is reading and uh it, that really impacted uh how i was getting through if i survive you but i did make a good chunk of progress um i think the night we got here because Joel was tired and went to bed, and I uh, listened for a while. And it's not that long of an audiobook, so I managed to get through a whole chunk of it, uh, so that I only really had about 45 minutes left. Um, and I finished. And I liked it. I would kind of throw out a warning, because I, I think there are a lot of people who would lose patience with this book. I almost lost patience with a little bit with the, the primary character, because it is one of those books where someone really gets in their own way a lot, and has a tendency to make really, really, really bad decisions a lot. And very self-destructive decisions. In a way that doesn't really make sense unless you understand the sort of pathology. Because this is a book that is very much about um, 
the sort of toxic relationship that you can have to your father as a son and that so the, how that toxic pull is something that can be very difficult to escape from and it takes the form of linked stories and that is actually one of my kind of i liked the book this is one of those situations I can tell already where I liked the book, but I'm about to complain about it for like five minutes and it's going to sound like I didn't like it, but I did. Um, I think there are some problems with the structure and one of them is that linked story structure because it feels like the novel is trying to have it both ways. It's trying to be more like a novel and it's trying to be short stories and it's trying to be linked stories. And it because of that, it doesn't some of it doesn't land. Um, and I think the best comparison to it, like a, a, an example of a book that did this but better, is Night of the Living Res by Morgan Talty. I feel like the way that collection navigates those linked stories about the protagonist's life really worked and elevated the book and gave you a sense of everything that was going on in that family, even though you kind of stay pretty close to the protagonist's perspective in that book. Uh, in this one, you stay pretty close to a, a sort of a triangle. Uh, there is the father, and then there's Trelawney, who's sort of our protagonist. He is um, unique because he was actually born in the United States. His family comes from Jamaica. And he has a brother named Delano, who is sort of the fav favored son of his father, and it creates that really toxic relationship between them. Uh, and most of the stories take one of their perspectives. There is one story that takes the perspective of a cousin, and to me, it doesn't really feel... It's a good story, but it is predictable, I thought. Um but it doesn't feel like it connects, even though this is a cousin of the characters. And I, I, I kind of feel like it shouldn't be there for that reason. Um, no spoilers. But um, I feel like it's only there to sort of emphasize that toxic push-pull between fathers and sons. Um, and how you kind of can't get get away from your father. You can't get away from the need of, from, from, for your father or from of things from your father. Um, it, it's interesting, but I don't think it quite works. And it, it, it makes it feel like, because that's the only time you leave the perspective of those three other people. So it doesn't feel like it belongs. It feels kind of out there. Um, and I think either John, uh, uh, Scoffrey needed to um, give more of that or just eliminate that section and stay with the three because I, it, it it felt a little too out there for me. And one thing I, I kept craving throughout the book was the perspective of the mother and you never get it. And I really wanted that. And, it, you know, it's not the book's fault that it didn't give me what I wanted. Uh, sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. But in this case, I think the, to me, the book was really needing that perspective. And uh, yeah, this is absolutely one of those things where I liked the book, but I'm going to spend like five to 10 minutes complaining about <laughs> like ripping it to shreds and picking it apart. Uh, I, I think it mostly works. I just think that that structure kind of let it down. And, um, I think that's where it sort of shows that this is a debut and uh, kind of gives that away. And the other area is that because it's linked stories, it jumps over sections of uh, what happens in Trelawney's life. And it feels like a cop out in a way because it doesn't always make sense how we get from one section to the next. Uh, for instance, in one, Trelawney is in college and then he uh, graduates and he doesn't know what to do. So he goes home. That's early in the book. So that's not a spoiler. Um, and then there's sort of like a jump and he's homeless. And you just think, wait a minute, how did this happen? And there's a slight explanation for like, oh, but this is how it happened and blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't really make sense. And I feel like it's a sort of narrative cop out. So you don't have to explain how all of that goes down. So it makes sense. You can just have it exist and then you can kind of in a way explain it. Um, and that kind of happens throughout the book. There are these sort of movements where someone will be doing OK. And then in the next section, they're just destroyed and it doesn't really make sense how that happens. Um, so by jumping and having this be stories, it feels like you're, you're um, 
eliminating the need to have that be part of the narrative. You can just jump from point A to point B without having a transition. Um, but I did like the book. Again, I'm, I'm complaining about it a lot, but I did like it. I, I think it's a, a very insightful, interesting book. Again, it, it is... And I will admit, I was really infuriated by some of the actions of the main character, especially toward the end, because it's it, it seems like just, why are you doing this? This is dumb. And uh, yet, I, I kind of think it works. And I think that it is showing how when you are depressed and kind of brought down, and uh, when you have been in this toxic pull of a relationship with your family, it's really hard to break out of that. Um and it it does show some really interesting ways that um, the system at large puts you in a situation where you are always trying to do better, trying to make yourself better. And it's not an easy thing to do at all. And um, I, I think it does get that across. And the ways in which people who have the resources take advantage of the people who don't and can really cause problems for them and make it more difficult for them. Uh, I mean, there's an even there's an entire section of the book where uh, Trelawney is working at um, a home where they basically keep records of uh, the tenants so they can jack up their rent and make more money. And uh, yeah, it, it it's the book does a really good job of that. And because of that, I feel like I'm willing to go along with some of the seemingly out there behavior, uh, that, or nonsensical behavior of the protagonist. So, yeah. So that's, uh, if I survive you, there's a dog staring at me from the next car, which is really funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, I did finish one other book. Joel and I had listened to a romance, a male for male romance with a Christmas theme on the way over. And we finished it last night. It was, um, I think it was called the Christmas wish. I'm blanking on the title right now. Um, I'll have the title down there. It was really in the description box. Um, forgive me. It has been a long week. Um, it was a really cute book, and I actually don't even remember the author, but it was a cute book. The premise is, it's actually the second in a series, and uh, the premise is that this um, Australian man who's been living in the United States for a long time, and actually was living in Missoula, which is where I live, um, gets a job at a new B&B &B that's opening in Montana, in a small town that really just does Christmas right. And, uh, it, it's a temporary job for the holidays, uh, but he figures he's going to be moving west anyway, so he doesn't have a plan for what he's going to be doing after this job, but he, uh, it, so he's got his whole car packed up, uh, he gets there, and of course, the owner of the inn that he is working at is a handsome man, and they have a, fl develop a flirtation over the course of the book, and it, it's cute, it's everything we needed from, like, a male-for-male -male romance as we drove, uh, the long drive from Missoula to here, um, and we, the only thing is we didn't finish it during the drive. So for the first couple of days we were here, we were trying to find time to do it. So finally last night we had dinner in the room and just let it play while we ate. And uh, that ended up working pretty well. Uh, so we finished that. And what else have I had going on? And someone's parking next to me. So I'm going to take a break. <laughs> and the uh, person who just parked next to me is staying in their car and they're just kind of staring at me. So I'm going to try to rush through the last of this. Um, I did attempt to start another audiobook, and that was uh, Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. And I'd kind of been hoping that this would have the same vibes as the Christmas wish list, um, where it would just be sort of comforting and cinnamon bun. And I really got annoyed with it very quickly. So I, I'm going to mention it, but I'm not counting it as anything that I read for the year because I didn't make it far enough along. I'm not even going to count it as a DNF. I think I made it maybe 15 minutes in. So it's supposed to be one of those um, LGBTQ plus romances set during a cooking competition, which is another thing of that's really speaks to me. Um, but in the first 15 minutes, you meet one of the protagonists and uh, she's just a mess. Like she's nervous and she runs into who I am assuming will be the uh, other love interest in the book. And uh, she's so nervous that she talks about how she peed in her pants in fourth grade. And then she gets to her station to complete the first competition and uh, is talking about how she's so nervous that she's gassy. And then when she goes to present her dishes to her dish that she prepared to the judges, she trips. And it's like, that's too much. That is way too much. I can't deal with that right now. So, and it's a shame because I've heard good things about Anita Kelly and I think this book in particular. Um, but I was not feeling that. So it, it's just, it's a little too much 
Pratt falling and sort of nervous energy. Um, I think I have a copy of that book on my shelf, so I'm gonna have to think about whether or not I want to keep it and if, if I might try again, because that was a lot. It was just too much. So I dropped that one. Um, I also read, a, I have not really done much reading uh, of a physical book this week. I did pick up a physical book two nights ago and I read, so I, I mentioned last week that the books that I'm sort of able to get through um, are books that are kind of short um, and uh, maybe a little infuriating. And actually in a way, if I survive you kind of fit that brief, because again, some of the actions of the protagonists are infuriating. Um, but I also had, I brought Rumpel Rests His Case uh, by John Mortimer, which is a book I've had for a very long time. I bought it when it was, when it was released. Um, I was working at Borders and it, uh, it was getting really good reviews. I think it was a bestseller. Um, so I purchased it and have never gotten around to reading it, but it's like short stories um, with a sort of, I think they have a sort of mystery slant to them, although the first one was not very mysterious. Um, following a um, justice uh, in, the, in, in the United States, we just call him a lawyer. Um, Rumpel of the Bailey is what he's known in uh, in the, these books. And I hadn't known the history of it. I knew there was a TV series, but I assumed this was one of those situations where a series of books was adapted to a TV series. It turns out the TV series existed first. John Mortimer was a writer for it, and he began adapting the episodes of the series into short stories that he would release as books. And uh, then when the series ended in 1992, he started creating original uh, stories. And this is, I think, this is the second or third original set of stories. Um, I only read the first one. It was fine. But I think that sort of short, bite-sized um format will probably do well for me while we're here. Um, I'll, keep, I'll try another one. It wasn't bad, so uh, I didn't love it, but, you know, it'll be fine. So we shall see. Uh, that's kind of where we are at. Um, that Not a whole lot of reading action, but, you know, considering where I've been at and where I'm at mentally and emotionally, that was a pretty solid week. So uh, I will leave it at that. And uh, just say, uh, again, thank you for all of your support and all of that. And it, it is really deeply appreciated in all the kind comments here and on Instagram, where I've been posting a little more frequently. And uh, it, it really means a lot to Joel and me. So thank you. And um, as always, I really appreciate your time. And I will be back until next time. Happy reading.